Yes, people, good evening to you all. Brentford 3, Liverpool 1. You know, 90 minute. let's see how many more the ref's going to give. And then straight, we're going to do the live match reaction, review the game, going through, you know, all the best moments. And yeah, I mean, what a performance by Brentford. What a performance. Six extra minutes. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. I knew it was going to be a tough game, but big up to everyone who's watching this. Please, people, make sure you always smash the like. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Really appreciate the support. And yeah, uh, 91 minute. Brentford may score another one. Nah, that was clear. That was Nunez. Nah, Robertson. I mean, crazy, crazy, crazy. Another poor Liverpool. Wow. Some of Tottenham fans may be lucky, you know, may be happy to celebrate, you know, but still, Tottenham will not get top four. Big up, Luca. Big up to you, my man. Really appreciate the support. Keep smashing the like, people. How are you, Luca, by the way? I know they don't get back to this game unless a miracle happens, but I cannot see, you know. We are most um, 93 minutes, you know, six extra minute time. I cannot see. Like I say, look. I've seen many times two goals in football in one minute, but not the way Liverpool is playing. He says he's good. He's live in one hour. Good man. I will try and catch up your live as always. If you're not live, I'll catch up after straight your live. Always showing your support, my man. But yeah, um, with me, I'm going to have um, Millie says good evening. Yes, good evening. What is going on with Liverpool? What is going on with Liverpool? Millie, tell me, tell me what is going on with Liverpool. Absolutely shocking. What is going on with Liverpool? Yeah, hi, Millie. Tell me what is going on with Liverpool. What a game, by the way. What a game are we watching? What a game. Brentford, we knew, we said yesterday, you know, it's going to be a tough game. You know, Liverpool and um, Brentford at home, very, very tough team to beat. You know, after that first half, remind me, um, Brentford, Man United this season. Brentford. Ah, it's 93, almost 94 minute now. I doubt it's going to happen another goal, but... That corner, now goal kick for Liverpool. Um, Millie says Liverpool are in the muds. Brentford are a dangerous team. Very true. Very, very true. Yeah, tough team to beat at home. But saying this, you know, Arsenal beat them up, you know, Brentford at home, 3 0. That was an, a magical performance by Arsenal. But yeah, Brentford, good side, good manager. And, you know, even without, you know, Ivan Tony, you know, probably their best player, and they still dominate. Wow. Brentford was close to score the fourth goal. Well played from Allison coming out. Very quick reaction from Allison. Yeah, it's true. Brentford crossing the box. I say clear by Liverpool. The game is almost over. And um, yeah, 94, nearly 95 minutes now. But what a performance. What a performance by Brentford. Like I said, you know, even without Ivan Tony, Liverpool, uh, Brentford still, you know, they're still short a tough team to beat. So Liverpool, once again, this Liverpool today was the same Liverpool, basically, you know, I we saw against Leicester, a Liverpool that we've seen this season. You know, Liverpool this season remind me a lot. OK, they don't play as boring as Tottenham, but at times they remind me of Tottenham, Chelsea as well. You know, different style of football. But yeah, they've all just been shocking this season. <clears throat> um, Millie says, do you remember? I was talking to Luca. Yeah, last season when Avan Tony said that he posted something on Twitter, nice kick about with the boys. The game is almost over. Liverpool was close score. It's not going to happen anything now. I doubt it. Liverpool might try to cross the ball in the box. Last chance. 
but nafta is going to change it Thiago in a box Mati that's it basically it's over come on ref just finish the game six minutes gone come on I doubt anything's gonna happen Salads, that's honestly Salad today was so poor like he has been basically this season it's not the Salah we saw last season, that's for sure. Why is the ref still given a few minutes? Uh, big up to Football Talk, Henry 11. Big up to you, my man. Really appreciate the sport. People keep smashing the like on this one. The game is over. Finish. That's it. Bye bye. Over. Big up to everyone. Yeah. Brentford 3, Liverpool 1. Wow, wow, wow. What a performance by Brentford. I mean, beautiful and shocking Liverpool once again. This this is the Liverpool we've seen basically this season, right? I know a second half Liverpool tried to dominate a little bit more, half more the ball, clop a half time. They even, you know, say merci to anyone. Straight away, three changes at half time. Fair play, but the changes did not make any difference. Like, you know, you expect Brentford was the same against Tottenham at home, you know, in a boxing day. Tune your lap, second half, you know, strike. At the beginning of the second half, they tried to defend. You expect, you know, Tottenham to have more of the ball like Liverpool had. Yeah, Liverpool you know, created a few chances, but it wasn't that Liverpool that we want to see, you know, come and back, dominate. They got one goal back. Uh, before that, they got Nunez as well. Nunez score, you know, that was a brilliant goal. Shame he was offside. But, yeah, and then, you know, Brentford was still trying to damage Liverpool in the counter-attack. And they did this kind of third goal. They could have scored another one. It was just very, very poor Liverpool. But let me just go through in the live chat. Um, like, uh, yes, Millie saying good evening. Always good evening to you. Brentford at uh, Dungeons team. Yeah, definitely. Brentford is a tough team to be. I do I actually enjoy watching Brentford, right? I love, you know, the atmosphere from all the Brentford fans. I like their manager. I think he's been doing an absolutely amazing job, you know, since from the championship. You know, a few times they did not come, you know, they did not go promote. They were so unlucky, but they were still playing good football. You know, the style of football that Brentford plays, do you know what? It actually reminds me back in the days with the style of Alex Ferguson. I swear, you know, at times when I actually watch, like, especially with corners and free kicks, you know, it reminds me a lot of back in the days, Alex Ferguson. But I tell you what, Thomas Frank is an absolute genius. What a manager. Even when, um, you know, Klopp made, just quickly, I've got in here, my man. Um, Oliver, big up to you. You predict 3 1 Liverpool yesterday. Yeah. And we had Brentford 3 Liverpool 1. My man, once again, we've saw basically the Liverpool we've seen this season. This yeah. is the Liverpool we have seen for the whole season. Like I did say, I did I, say, like if we perform how we did versus Leicester versus Brentford, we get demolished, and we did. Yeah, it's true. You did say that yesterday. But what did he went wrong in your opinion today? What did he went wrong? Right, the whole team, the Van Dijk is a disgrace, honestly. Um, everything went wrong. We need a midfielder. We. And, and opinions on Nunes, um, I'm going to give him time, but I'm just annoyed right now. This team just annoys me. Too. This team is so inconsistent. Like, why can't this team... You beat Leicester, I thought we would see much better response, but we didn't. Why? So. But yeah, man, what went wrong? I don't know. It's just, like, this is on the players for me. Like, what's your opinion? I don't know, but it's on the players. I think Klopp could provide 11. I'm glad he bought Van Dijk off at half time to show a statement, which I'm glad and glad that. But but yeah, just annoying man. Like why this is just a joke. This is embarrassing. We lost to Brentford without Ivan Tony. It's just Yeah, that's what I just said. Let's not forget that Brentford did not have probably their best player, Ivan Tony. But 
still we saw the same tactic we saw the same Brentford yeah, right Brentford did not change anything this is Brentford style of football I was actually just mentioned before you come on my man I was mentioned I said this Brentford with Thomas Frank especially since they move into the Premier League right because they would they they used to play different style of football in the championship but you expect a uh, similar style of football but I remember back in the days Alex Ferguson's you know, a Man United with Alex Ferguson, this reminds me a lot. Especially the way they take the corners, the free kicks, even the goal, you know, even some of the free kicks that the goalkeeper actually takes. It reminds me back in the day, you're probably young to remember, uh, Fabian Barthez, the French goalkeeper from Man United, he used to take the long free kicks and stuff. I mean, it reminds me a lot, but there's none that, that Thomas Frank had all the credit today. Because yeah. I haven't even Tony and still going there, put an amazing performance and beating, you know, Liverpool. We're talking about Liverpool. Yes, Liverpool hasn't been any good for me. Liverpool hasn't been any good this season. But, you know, let's give credit to Frank, um, yeah. Thomas Frank, once again. I, and- I have to give credit to Brentford, though. They, they just outclassed us. And, um, and Boomer's underrated. I agree now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, going back to Football Talk 11, he says opinion on Nunez. Look, I keep banking Nunez all the time. I'm not sure what to say about Nunez anymore. I just think the bad luck is with him for sure at the minute because let's not forget, right? In the first 15, 20 minutes, Liverpool had two good chances. It's really buried that chance in the first five minutes. But he should have yeah. scored that and they would have been... The I game think would have won happened. that game. He would have won that game if he finished that. I think we'd won that game because I think we'd yeah. have control. But I mean, it's a good block for me. But I think Nunes should a seventy mil plus should be bearing that. And but look, uh, I have to credit to Brentford. Like I said, I see Thomas Frank. What a job he's done. He's done a brilliant job at Brentford. Amazing. Like I said, since the championship, they was unlikely to not get promoted a few times. They did their last season. They had a good season. This season again. Look, let's not forget they just dropped to Tottenham. In Boxing Day, uh, two walls. They should have won. They should have won. Um, they went away to West Ham, beat West Ham, and they just beat Liverpool three-one. And with they, they class, you know, tactic that was brilliant. Their long balls, everything was working from them. Every time they was having a free kick inside of the box, every corner as well. By the way, there was a few there's a lot of goals, but fair play. I think the linesmen did I don't well. Think I, heard gosh, they can't. Well. I think that was a foul from Arte, but. I can't really blame the um, I think, I mean, he did touch him, but I don't think that's enough. That's just me, you know. That third Brentford goal, I thought the ref and the VAR did well to allow the goal because I don't think that was enough, you know. But I don't blame, but I don't blame the AR. We deserve to lose. We, yeah, we Konate was poor today, not only Van Dyke. Konate was making so many mistakes. The gap between, you know, the two defenders was massive today. You know, and once again, Alex Arna, right? I do, and let me just go back to Liverpool lineup today, right? I didn't think that Alex Arna Berlin had a bad game. I thought he was one of the best Liverpool players today, apart from scoring the goal, good header. But why did Klopp keep playing Alex, Alex Chamberlain? I just don't get why. He keeps playing him. I know mm-hmm. Gap was still uh, waiting for his work permission because I probably he's not ready yet. That's why he could not even be in a bench today. You still got Fabio. Uh, you still got Fabio Carvalho, who we don't know what's going on with him. He's injured or now he's not fit enough. But then, yeah, I mean, like you said, I thought that Nunes chances could have changed the game easily. Yeah, easily could have changed the game. But then, you know, Brentford tactic. They they basically was playing with. You know, a line of four in front of the line four. They basically was playing with another line of like five and one or four, two or one one. It was just crazy tactic. That was really good, and yeah, that every once uh, Brentford start going the confidence after they create a first chance, that's it. You know, we just saw Brentford over and over and over doing the same thing typically we do from corners, free kicks, and try. With long balls and yeah, absolute brilliant. That first half was good, tune up, could have been more, but then second half we saw. What did you make of second half? Seeing Klopp making the change in the half time. I mean, I was happy he made Van Dyke off and because Van Dyke's position is sorted, it's not. 
Yeah. Um, but I think it was a better second half. A better second half, but it wasn't enough. And I think it was a bit too late. I mean, I, yeah, I think we need... Like we, we always concede first. I don't know what it is. I don't know. Like It's just porn. But yeah, I mean, the substitutions were good, obviously. But like I said, it was too late. and it, We should have been better in the first half. If we do that in the first half, then I think we win it. We we don't go two 0 down. Just at least keep it one 0 at half time. Then I think we can win the game. We conceded two goals, and that that's what I think I gave up on them because this is not the same Liverpool team that was two years ago where it could come down from two 0 down. This is a Liverpool side that lost their prime. They're just not. They're just not clicking. I don't know what it is, but should have signed a midfielder in the summer. Now I have to search for me to be able to in this January window. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because you can tell that once Thiago, you know, Thiago Cantre, there's some games that, for some reason, he cannot just click. If he does not click, you don't have anyone, right? When you have games like this today, Thiago Cantre was poor. He cannot click. If he cannot click, that's it. You know, he yeah. seems like that midfield, there's no ones in there. Elliot was having a very bad game. He was very, very poor. I was shocked after that first, first 45 minutes how poor he was. And obviously, he did not had he couldn't support Thiago as well. So Thiago was lost. But like I said, credit to uh, yeah. Brentford. You know, tactic there was absolutely brilliant. Still, their style of football, the same style of football, there was damage. They decide to damage Liverpool whenever they need it, whenever they want to. Right, Lou, you mentioned, right, Liverpool got one goal back in the second half. They still had most the most possession. They was trying and trying, but, you know, Brentford knew, like you mentioned, that second goal before halftime. You know what? Why not so tune in at halftime, I feel like? I doubt it that Liverpool were going to get back into the game. Anything can happen in football, but I could not mm. see. I had a little belief when we scored that first goal just straight away because I think if we had any chance, we need to score early, which we did. And I had a little belief and we were much better. And I, I sensed the goal coming. I mean, Nunes can't finish for some reason. I don't know why I'm going to stop giving him time because it's yeah. coming to the end soon. Like, and you mentioned about Liverpool, um, sorry, Brentford's second goal, it comes straight after a disallowed goal, right? The reaction was absolutely poor from Liverpool team. Everyone was just all over the place, you know? They lost their concentration straight away. Instead of, you know, look, the goal was disallowed, still 1-0, like you said, it would have been so much better to be 1-0 half time, but yeah. A second goal for me, you know what? I had the feeling I cannot see Liverpool get back. Even when Liverpool scored in the second half, right? I still had my doubts. I was like, still, they may get a draw, like Tottenham did against Brentford in a boxing day. But it's just a confidence the way Brentford was doing to Liverpool today. They was yeah. just doing, whenever they decide to click and do whatever they want to Liverpool to damage, they was damage Liverpool. But we can't yeah. defend corners, man. They actually done us with corners, man. Yeah, Which is... uh, yeah, long balls, absolutely unbelievable. Let me just go uh, through in the live chat. I say uh, hello to Millie, Luca, Football Talk um, 11. Big up to you, my man, as well. Onto the ball, say, share a base of say, a Liverpool supporter. And uh, big up to you, my man. Uh, Football yeah. Talk good. Uh, 111 says, and Benmo on the right, yes, yeah. absolutely on the right. He's been at Brown for a few years, really good player, hard work as well. He's... Because I think people have been focusing on Tony, not really looking at Mbuma, really. Yes, yeah, very true. This is why I said to you, like, I give all the credit today to Thomas Frank, right? You know, I always like to give moment of the match at the end of every, you know, uh, match reaction reviews that I always do. And um, I've surprised a few people because I've gave... Some like in the World Cup, I gave two or three times. I gave my man of the match to the manager, right? I remember giving to the Saudi Arabia manager against Argentina my man of the match. And today, I don't think it's going to be any difference. Yes, Brentford, some of their players had an amazing performance, like Ember, Yaz as well, scored a goal. He was brilliant. But you know, Frank 
Thomas Frank, for me, was the key again today. Without Ivan Tony, he did not change his style of football. And then the substitutions that he made in the second half, right? He knew when the game was 2-1, he needed to do something, right? He needed to do something because he saw Liverpool, which keep trying. Liverpool could have get one goal back straight away, making it into 2-1 and the game could have been completely different. But then Thomas Frank still on top, you know, genius. I thought he was brilliant today. But I agree with football talk, um, yeah. 11, 111, whatever. I think Ember is an amazing player. His hard work is just, his work rate is unbelievable. Big up to you, my man, by the way. And Jamili says, how are they going to go? <laughs> we got Madrid. So, yeah, I'm not ready for that. I am not oh, ready. It's different mentality. And it comes to a different mentality when it comes to the Champions League. I know it's Madrid, the kings of Europe, but trust me, is you know, for you to have, you know, to play in the Champions League in this, you know, big nights like that, like against Madrid, is the mentality. And you know Liverpool has the mentality in the Champions League, right? Liverpool has show, has proved in the last few years, you know, how many Champions League have Liverpool reached in the last six, seven years, uh, three Champions League final and playing in the big nights like this. It's about the mentality, right? I, I keep saying yeah. this, right? You look at teams like Liverpool, uh, a city and um, Paris Saint Germain, they haven't got the mentality that teams like history, teams, teams like Liverpool, Madrid had, and Barca, mm. Bayern, and stuff. I know by, uh, Barca hasn't been um, you know, any good in the last few years, but it's about the mentality. And I do believe the mentality, and I've said this a few times, I do believe Liverpool will do Madrid. I don't know what, I just have the feeling. But yeah, Madrid is Madrid, yeah. the Kings of Europe, they seem to always do it. And um, Liam I that for. saying Liverpool are finished. I do, that for. do you yeah. agree with that? Is Liverpool finished? No, I wouldn't agree. I mean, depends on if we get top four or not. And like, but even if we don't, I don't think we're finished. I think we still have enough in us. But if we don't get Jude Bellingham, I think we're finished. That's what I like. Because he's our only target that's actually going to be good. I can't really think of anyone else that's going to be as good as Jude. Yeah, and by the look of it, Enzo Fernandes have Chelsea. basically signed for Chelsea. Yeah. He's close to sign for Chelsea. Chelsea's going to pay a hell of a money. But I mean, yeah. loads of money for a player that only 21. Yeah. And he's only young. But the thing is, what Chelsea's doing now, like we've mentioned this yesterday, we said that Chelsea's rebuild and the squad, right? Chelsea's doing something that Liverpool should have done last season. And all the, even the summer, you know, they're not that. But you're still keeping players like, you know, we've mentioned, right? Henderson and stuff. You know, it's going to take time for Liverpool. You're bringing in Gapo now. You still got Nunes, he's young. Let's see what's going to happen. But Liverpool. I still don't get in top four. I still don't get in top four. But I mean, I don't even know if we're going to top four, to be honest. But let's see. We'll see what happens. And uh, Millie says that Dominance is definitely over. In yes. terms of title challenge, possibly this season, yes. But next season, I can see us challenging if we get top four this season and we get signed you, Bellingham. Um, I do believe that Liverpool will Liverpool and no one will sign Bellingham in um in this winter transfer. But I do believe you know in the summer you might go hard you know to yeah. sign Bellingham. There'll be Madrid in there, Man City. So yeah. be like I was about to mention that there's going to be teams like you know Madrid and City in there. And um, big up to everyone who's watching this. Ten people right now. Please make sure you smash the like. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Really appreciate the support. And um, let me know what was your thoughts about the game today. And uh, Liam says, um, sorry, I've missed one of his comments oh, here. He says, Top four, Arsenal, City, Man United and Newcastle. I still believe Liverpool will take one of Man United or Newcastle place, but who knows? I mean, not the way, you know, like, the way they've been performing this season, basically, is just poor. We should have lost two on the bounce, really. Last three got lucky, and then... Yeah. And then this um, game, our luck ran out, because we weren't finishing properly for some reason. Nunes, man, why can't you bury the first chance when you had it? Then that would have been a comfortable game, I think. We could oh, see yeah. it. Definitely, the game would have for sure been different because Liverpool would have been 1 0 up. You know, but anyways, mention about Liverpool going 1 0 up. Do you know Liverpool this season in 17 games in the Premier yeah. League, 
Liverpool has gone down one nil at one nil down in ten yeah. of them. How can you? It's Tottenham, uh, basically. We're Tottenham, basically. I don't know what's happening. Yeah, Tottenham the same, yeah. Absolutely. Like, I don't know. Liverpool and Chelsea and Tottenham, you can say three good disappointments there. Three, there. I mean, Tottenham, people overhyped Tottenham, so they are a disappointment. So, yeah, I think three teams that have been disappointing. You can even say Liverpool, Man City, um, no, Man City, Liverpool, uh, Tottenham and Chelsea. Those three. Yeah, that's for sure. And um, Liam says, Summer Frank yeah. is a good manager. He is. he is a very, very good manager. He's that kind of manager that, you know what, like we was mentioned yesterday about Graham Porter. He needs to be at Brentford. Does not... He... I hope he does not do what um, Graham Porter did. That big jump for a big club. You know, I know Chelsea is not an easy club for any football manager, but Thomas Frank, you know, he's doing well at Brentford. Stay yeah, there. I think Graham Potter, he should have stayed at Brighton for at least one more season and then. Oh, definitely, for sure. And um, Millie says he's good, Tom is very, yeah. very good manager. Like I said today, you know, tactic, he was brilliant. Without, he's basically top goal scorer, main player, probably best player as well. And then, you know, still got in there and class Liverpool. So, you know, you have to give credit to Thomas Frank. And mm-hmm. Millie says he's staying for four more years. Yeah, yeah. I hope he stays in there for a few more years. Liam says, with Klopp, the story always ends after seven years. I remember Northman, he was dominated for six years and he left them 17 before going to Liverpool. At Liverpool, he's dominated for six years now, struggled. I mean, he needs to he needs a rebuild. That's what I keep saying about Liverpool. Liverpool should have rebuilt the squads, start from last season and this season. And a, a few players, but not that rebuild that we expect. And also, um, big up to you, Football Talk says, Liverpool are class and can drop confidence. They have depth and talent and Jota, wasn't been hasn't been playing, but when he does, he scored a goal. Yeah, we've mentioned this. It's not only like Liverpool, but we've seen with Chelsea, we've seen with Tottenham. You know, this team has been having a lot of injuries this season. They've been unlucky with the injuries, that's for sure. But still, when you look at the squads, not much Tottenham, but when you look at um, Liverpool squads and Chelsea squads and the money this team has spent, you would expect them to do to be doing better than what they're doing at the minute because they've been just absolutely shocking. And um, yes, um, Mili says uh, Julian Bellingham is going to Madrid. He's going to top four and going to not the good trophy list and then put yeah, probably. Yeah, Liam says Liverpool won't progress anymore. I agree, with yeah. FSG in charge, they have hit their peaks. That is now same with Glazers at United. I agree. Okay. Yeah, I spot on. I absolutely agree with you. I don't know what the Glazers is still doing at Man United, but yes. And also, let's bring as well Levy at Tottenham as well. What is Levy still doing at Tottenham? This guy is a joke, honestly. Yeah. And um, Tuchel is a good manager. Didn't deserve yeah. it. Act. Yeah, we spoke about that yesterday. We did say that, you know, Tuchel should have been given more time. I think he's a good manager. And... Um, Tiago was a dude. I think you he's know, dead. He said Tiago was dead today. Or something like that. Yeah. So injury prone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, on, we need midfielders. That's why we need midfielders. That is why. That's for sure. Yeah, you definitely need midfield. And Millie says he's an injury pro. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. He, he's, you know, he's a quality player, but he just gets injured. If too, only right? was 28, man, or 27, man, he would have been up there with the best midfielders in the world. He is, but. He's probably going to drop down soon, so... Definitely. Mane is missing. Yeah. They didn't give him the money. I mean, Mane wanted to leave. The money really wanted to leave, so you couldn't do anything about it. You can't give an unhappy player at your club, so... Exactly. Yeah. I agree with you. I just think that the money's not a problem. You know, especially for a player like Mane, right? Mane seems to be, you know... You know, it's, it always seems to help a lot of people that hasn't got money. Mane, I don't think money's... A, I mean, there were rumors about him when he won in four hundred k. I mean, I mean, I don't know if it's true though, but yeah, yeah. And Liam says Liverpool need a new midfield. Yeah, we everyone knows that. that. That's why we're getting. That's why probably 
Casado is going to cost a hefty fee, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I agree. I think we've been saying this how many how many times now we've been saying about Liverpool needs a midfield. But then, like we've made, let's not forget that Liverpool went to get um, Arthur from uh, Juventus, but then the guy got injured. We never got the chance to see him. So, I mean, they need to. Who? But the thing, you, you as a Liverpool fan, right? Daleva, you as a Liverpool fan, as you always keep saying, you know, Liverpool, we. We know, we all agree that Liverpool needs a midfield. Who do you think can you see like Liverpool getting now for an average price? Because you know nowadays, if you want to go and get Enzo, he's going for Chelsea. You know, Benfica, Chelsea's going to probably spend about a hundred to hundred twenty minutes to get Enzo. So who would you get right now, right, to for a Liverpool midfield supplier that oh. you know? This is the thing with FSG is so cheap. Um, probably. I mean, I could see Casado happening if we can lower the price. Um, <clears throat> um, Amrabat probably from the World Cup. Amrabat, that's my realistic probably option. Yeah, and Amrabat is amazing for me. He was one of my favorite players in the World Cup. Absolutely genius. But then he can all play the same position as Fabinho. He can also play, you know, as a centre midfield yeah. instead of a defensive midfield. But yeah, I don't think Liverpool will get Arabat because very similar to Fabinho. And also with Kai Siedu from Brighton, there's another player that, you know, had a you know a crazy start of the season with Brighton. Really good, a very young player as well. And then, you know, this kind of player is that has an amazing game against big teams, right? Has a good World Cup and very young. The price tag on them, it just seems to go from always, like from, you know, 30 40 percent to 85 to 90 percent is just crazy. Yeah, Brian, I've been negotiating, so they are hard to get. They are yeah, hard. I think that you know, Kai Sido would have been a good signing for you, that's for sure. I absolutely agree. But then, do you think Brighton will let him leave right now? I don't think Liverpool is going to pay more than 70 million. Apparently, 70 million. I mean, could I see FSG paying now? If it was better owners, then yeah, but it's not. Yeah, I don't, I cannot see because just because just Liverpool just got Gapo now, right? How much did you spend for Gapo overall? 37, 37 million to 44 million. So, yes, and, and you got ads as well. And um, I don't think that I cannot see Liverpool going up there and you know, Liverpool, uh, Brighton is asking for at least over 50 million plus ads. I cannot see, you know, he's definitely a future player. Yeah, he's, you know, he's been doing well in the Premier League. So he's been playing the league. He knows the league. He would be a good signing, but I doubt Liverpool will go. I don't think we have the money. We don't even have the money for that. We don't even have the money. It's true. Elliot is in the midfield. It's true. Elliot is not a midfield. Right wing, I say he's a right wing, right mid, probably something like that. Yes, definitely. And um, Liam says, Football says agree, and uh, Liam says you need pace in our midfield and yeah. creativity. Yeah, sure. And um, football talk, uh, mm, 111 yeah. is what prize or Madison? Mad- yeah, Madison, I can't see because then that's not what I'm saying. Me Ward Prowse, potentially. I'll say Ward Prowse, definitely. Ward yeah, Prowse. but if he is, yeah, with Madison, you know, if Leicester let Madison go, I mean, right now in a winter. They already let a few players go in a summer transfer. And uh, I cannot see... Them Especially two them and might leave as well. So they don't want to sell Madison again. Definitely. And um, imagine Madison, Bellingham and Caicedo. Continue right? dreaming. Continue dreaming. That's not happening. That's not happening. That's for sure. And um, you need all the petrol money from City and Paris Germain to get all this. And uh, Millie and um, Henderson, Millie says Henderson, Miller, or like Sandra Berlin needs to Henderson, be. Henderson, no, probably not Henderson. Uh, like Henderson's rubbish, but he's a good leader. Milner and Knox can go. Yeah, I mean, I I thought, you know, Milner should have gone, Alex Chamberlain should have gone in a summer transfer. This is what, when I say about Liverpool should have started to build the squad, and they didn't, but it's where it's. Um, Liam, yeah. um, really says Liam, pipe dream. Yes, yeah. that is. That's not for me. Uh, Konate had a shot yeah. today. 
you've mentioned that, like as you said about as well, Van Dyke was really poor, but Konate as well. Who was the worst for you, Konate today or Van Dyke? I know Van Dyke mm-hmm. come come our half time, so that saved him a little bit. Well, I mean, probably it's hard. They're both in my I'd edge Van Dyke just because he he was the he's meant to be the best centre back in the world, and he's not delivered for us this season. And he come off at half time as well, so yeah, I'll say Van Dijk. But they're both awful. Yeah, they both. I agree. They both was shocking today. Millie says yes, he did. And Millie says we paid eighty million for Ben White. You know, yes, that's what, that's what I said lots of times. I said that I do not write Ben. I don't think Ben White worth that money. You know, he's not a bad player, but he's not worth that money. When you know. He, he left Brighton. Brighton is that kind of club that will ask. It's like the Portuguese club. It's like the foreign club, right? Like clubs Apparently, like he, meant, he meant 50 million. He meant 50 million pounds. Yeah, plus ads. It, yeah, yeah. it wasn't actually 80 million, but it was close. Even that, yeah. you know, is too much, okay? He's having a very good season. Don't get me wrong. You know, Ben White has been absolutely amazing, right? For a centre-back as well, a player that, you know... His main position is a centre back. He's been doing amazing as a right back, and yeah, mm. Ben White has been really good at season, but definitely not worth the money that Arsenal paid. But a lot of people are going to say, "Yeah, but have you seen this, him this season?" Nah. But let me just go um, mention with as I was saying about Brighton. Brighton is a club that, like the Portuguese clubs, I see I full as well. Benfica, Porto, and stuff. They always ask for you know, higher prices. Like Andrew Fernandes, they want the release clause exactly. They don't want lower, which... Of course. Yeah, but in Benfica and Porto always seems to do that. This is why they funnel, they make a lot of money. And um, finally come to... Let me just go through Liam. He was 15 yeah. in white. Yes, I but remember it was add-ons as well. So he was close to about 70 million or something like that. And um, how do you go live... Um, my man, just um, find me on Instagram, yeah, and um, just inbox me, then I will support you. I will help you how to go live and stuff. But if you ever want to come and join my live streams, just let me know, and you're more than welcome anytime, my man. And um, Millie says, was 50 million? I was thinking of slab heads. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> and she said, I'm a woman. No, yeah, you're a woman, but you know a lot about football. Your football knowledge is really, yeah. really good, and I really appreciate the sport. But, yeah, my man, look. A very disappointing performance by Liverpool today. Shocking. Let's give the man off the match, right? And then we're going to look through just quickly in the last five minutes of this live stream. Just let's quickly look into Liverpool next games, right? But um, if you had to give a man off the match today, I know it's not an easy task. Who would you give to? And everyone in the chat, everyone that's watching this, really appreciate the support. Keep smashing the like, please. And um, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I think oh it's hard. Brentford no. I can't give Liverpool any man at the match though with Brentford. I think maybe Mbuma because he caused us chaos, he caused us I mean I could give Brentford the man of the match the whole Brentford team, but I'm gonna give it to Mbuma because just because of the fact that he's he's a good player man, he caused us chaos as well. So I'll give it to Mbuma. Yeah. Fair play. Do you know what? I can disagree with you because you made some good points in there. The whole they're Brentford. all good. They're, they're all good, Brentford. They were they, really they good. Are then, good. Yes, Emblem was really good. I thought if I had to give it to a player, I would give to him. But a lot of people might not agree with me on this, right? Yeah. And I've said this a few times. Why does, you know, man of the match has to go to a football award? Why? Why? I know he's power of football, power of the rules, whatever, but once again, right, like I've mentioned at the beginning of this live stream, I am going to give my man off the match to Thomas Frank, right? A lot of people might not agree with me, going to think, oh, is this guy weird? What is he talking about? But yeah, let's not forget that Brentford did not have the main player, the top goal scorer. The player has been, um, you know, unstoppable this season. But I gave him my man off the match to Thomas Frank just because this guy was genius. It did not change apart from not having his main player, yeah, goal scorer. Yeah. He did not change his style of football. A lot of managers would probably have changed the style of football, not having Ivan Tony able to play. 
And yes, I give my money off the match to Thomas Frank. If you want to call me crazy, you can. I don't care. I My man off the match for that goes to Thomas Frank. I thought he was genius in that second half when he started making some of the changes that Brentford needed. He was brilliant, spot on. And yeah, look, he's my man off the match. But I will not disagree with you, of course. You know, If I had to look to a player, it would have to be, definitely had to be M. Bemo for sure. But yeah, for me, it has to be Thomas Frank, my man off the match. And um, let me just go through in here. Some people say, um, sorry, football talk, um, Henry Levy says, yes, I would. Yeah, my man, anytime, you know, I'm in here to support you. You supporting me, I'm going to support you. If you want to join my, my streams, just let me know. Inbox me on Instagram or Twitter and we're going to have a chat. Once I'm free later, after this live stream, I need to go out and do a few things, have dinner as well, and we'll have a chat. That's for sure. And I, I appreciate my man in here. Daleva, I know he's a little bit upset. He's a Liverpool supporter, but I really appreciate his coming along. I really enjoy him talking about a game with him. He got very good football knowledge. And let me just go in here. Liam says, are the players burn out from playing pressing football? Or what do you think? Um, it's just, I think it's age now. They're, they're, they're knackered now. So I think it's hangover from last season as well. The quadruple was done. I think we're a bit hangover from that. But there's no excuse for that. But I think i say it's ageing and probably the burnout as well from last season. Yeah. There you go, Liam. And um, Millie, we would love to have Gonzalo at Arsenal. Benfica would ask 100 million. Uh, no. Benfica would probably ask for 150 million after his hat trick against Switzerland in the World Cup. And yeah. um, he's, I swear, Gonzalo Ramos' price tag after that performance against Swissley probably went to from 60 to about 120 million. It's just crazy how yeah. football nowadays run with uh, footballers and, you know, price tags is just crazy. And um, football talk 111 says, M. Bembe for me, fair play, my man. Like I said, I wouldn't disagree. But yeah, I give to, you know, Thomas Frank for me, was genius. They are a great team. They um way manager to uh, stay up and beat teams. That's for sure, Brentford. I agree. And also, Millie clapping hands. I think she's agree with me with, you know, giving my money off to much to Thomas Frank. I hope Thomas Frank actually, you know, listen to this because I gave my money off to much to Thomas Frank, right? I hope he actually will listen to me one day and he's going to be happy. You know, finally, he's, he's probably going to think, finally, someone actually given me a money off the match. And, um, Football Talk says, I agree, Frank was great. Mm. And Liam says, I like the Brentford model. I mean, yeah. brilliant. Mm. I said, do you know what? I, I don't know if Liam was on the live stream already, Liam. And I said, um, you probably, Liam will remember that. I, you know, Brentford style of football remind me of Alex Ferguson back in the days. The way you take the corners, the free kicks, you know, the goalkeeper taking, you know, free kicks from a long ball as well. It does really remind me of Man United with Alex Ferguson back in the days. It does remind me. And it's, it's a style of football that, yeah, it may not attract a lot of people, but then at the same time, it will attract you because it's a pace, fast football, strong, you know, strong in the air as well. Very, very good football. So, yeah, I mean, brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant. And um, Liam, uh, champions don't get by now. <laughs> I mean, that's and, uh, true. But I guess... We all have a bad day, don't get me wrong. You know, any champion have a bad day. But yeah, the thing is Liverpool's been having too many bad days this season. And uh, Millie says, there are a lot of key players and the ones who are playing yeah. have things. And um, she, she also says, Van Dijk hasn't been same yeah, since then. Very true. And, yeah, I mean, like he's you said... He's worse than ever this season. He's been, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. Last season he was all right. But this season he's bad, dropped off, dropped off. The whole team has dropped off, maybe except Salah, who's had a decent season. Firmino's been brilliant as well. That's it. And Thiago when he's fit. And yeah, Alisson. Alisson has been brilliant. Well. Alisson is always good. Alisson has been an amazing goalkeeper in the last... Probably in the last... Six or seven years, probably up there, definitely with one of the best goalkeepers up there. Um, Millie says, Great stream, guy, as always. Really appreciate the support, yep. Millie. 
um, Big Big and Liam says, I wasn't on the live then. Yeah, I've mentioned about, you know, um, Brentford style of football. Thomas Frank plays basically like you probably remember, you know, Alex Ferguson back in the days with Man United. Let's give, you know, as well, you know, a big up to Brentford goalkeeper, Ryan, right? Let's not forget, he's the keeper that, with the most saves this season in the Premier League, right? And he was brilliant again today, right? The times that he was cool out, even the one that was offside, still manager, I mean, he was brilliant. And he, like I just mentioned, you know, he's the keeper with the most saves. And he's, last season, you guys remember him as well. I mean, he's been brilliant. What a keeper. He's been really, really good. And... Um, Football Talk says, I agree with Millie. Yes, we all agree. Look, let me just quickly, let us let me share my screen quickly with everyone. Let's look into Liverpool next games because that, like us, we, we've looked, we went through, but we know how, you know, tough is going to be from now. We have teams like in the boat, um, probably like about six, you know, everyone is fighting for their lives at the minute, you know, at the top as well, top eight, everyone's trying to fight to get to the top four, everyone's trying to fight, you know, to get a spot in the European football next season, so it's just been absolutely crazy, but let me just quickly share my screen with you amazing people, and then we're going to go and look through Liverpool next game. You as a Liverpool fan, it's actually good to have someone in here, you know, is a Liverpool supporter. Then, you know, we can actually go through this kind of thing. But, my man, look in here. As you can see now, FA Cup, you know, third run next game. Um, that is just, let's, let's just look in the Premier League games, right? <laughs> and um, let me just quickly see Liam. Liam says... Um, Raya is a decent. I wouldn't have four. Uh, Strax cousin would be number one. Yeah, true. I said that because I'm Albanian. <laughs> Fair play to you, my man. And um, yeah, right. Let's look uh, through this quick. So we've got in a Premier League, right? Liverpool has a tough place to go, right? Brighton is always a tough place. I know Arsenal just beat them, but I was, you know, what's a game of football? What's a game of football on New Year's Eve that was? And, um, and, the big one. and then you got Chelsea. And then you go way to Wolves. You know, this is the kind of games that is dangerous, you know. And now we're talking about Premier League, right? We're talking about the biggest league in the world, the most competitive league in the world. Yes, but come on. Look, it's going to be games that teams are fighting for their lives. Like Wolves especially especially like Wolves. We were down there, so that would be a tough test. Wow, it's not looking easy for Liverpool. Look against Brighton, at home to Chelsea. Like I've just mentioned, Wolves, always going to be tough because they're fighting for their lives. And Liverpool against Everton, look, oh, you man. never know. It's a derby, so, you know, they hate each other, so there's always going to be a new castle game, which I know that will be a tough one. New Castle. And you know, Newcastle, right? has only lost one game this season and was against Liverpool and that was after, you know, how many plus minutes, right? But no. it's not easy, right? Then you got a Champions League game against Madrid, first leg. But like, let's just look Liverpool next five Premier League games, right? Have a think in the next five Liverpool Premier League games, we're going to have, you know, like probably most likely Gapo. We might have Jota back again. Hopefully by midfielder. Firmino as well. Who knows if you're going to sign a midfielder. But when you look at Liverpool next five games, as a Liverpool fan yourself, and I'm sure you are because you, you know, you you always been real with Liverpool. You know, if they play bad, if they don't deserve you, I'm sure you will always agree. You will always share. Honestly, take. I mean, from your head, right? Not from your heart. From your head, what can you see Liverpool getting out from the next five Premier League games? I know that you know today. You know, every football game is different, right? Every football match is different. So, uh, I, think, I mean, I think we'll beat Brighton. I think we'll draw versus Chelsea. I think we'll just beat Wolves. I think we'll just beat Everton. I think we'll draw to Newcastle. 
So do you think that you will draw against Newcastle in the next five yeah. games? That's the you know that's the yeah. fifth of the Champions League. Yeah. Do you reckon? What is your hopes against Brian? Let's look. You know, let's go more into deep details against Brighton. Away to Brighton, right? Uh, I don't know, man. This team is so. I don't know, but I think we should beat Brighton, but. We lost to Brentford, so who knows? But I think we should have enough. We have Greg put in, so hopefully he can make a difference. And um, Chelsea, we I never know can... Chelsea. Chelsea has been the same as Liverpool this season. I think we're going to draw. I think unless if we can build up some form, if, if we can beat Wolves and Brighton, and then we go in that game to form, I think we can beat Chelsea. But FA Cup really doesn't matter, so. I think it'll be a tight one, that one. It'll be a draw. So, but I'm not confident. That's that's going to be a tough one. Yeah. Um, away to Wolves. You should be Wolves, but you never know with Wolves. Wolves hasn't actually got bad squads. I keep saying this, right? I know they struggle this season. But if you actually look, yeah, Wolves squads in a paper, player by player, come on, they haven't got bad squad. They have a lot of quality players. I think we can comfortably beat Wolves in terms of I can't see who's scoring. They can't score goals. That's their main uh, problem. Yeah. Wolves hasn't got enough power up front. That's why they struggle. And also, um, you know, there's a derby in here. You know? I think we Everton always make a tie. I think we always get that one goal. So I think we should be Everton. But then again, I can see it during that one to be fair as well. But I think we have, we should have enough to be Everton because Everton are just... It's the derby, though, to be fair. I could see a draw, most likely, but I can see us winning because Everton always make it tight. So, yeah, I'm going to say a win, though. I'm going to win that. And uh, I watch Newcastle. Wow, wow, wow. What's that's, the game going to be? Especially at half five. Their fans are going to be buzzing for it, I think. So, mm. I think I could see us losing that as, as well because it depends what form we go into that game. But that's a problem, mate. Just say we beat Brighton, we beat Chelsea. We beat Wolves, we lose versus Everton. Not confident. But I think if we can just beat them four going to that game, I think we can beat Newcastle. Yeah, Either way, yeah. And let's not forget how much this game will mean to Newcastle after what happened at Anfield. Oh, well, they're going to want revenge. Uh, Especially if it's at Newcastle's ground as well, it makes it worse. Because if it was at Anfield at half five, I would have been more confident. But since it's they're going to, especially when we scored that last minute, they're going to go for hunger. They're going to, because if we play like this, oh well, get ready for a long day versus Newcastle. Definitely, I absolutely agree with you, my man. I think it's going to be a very, very tough game, and I wait to Newcastle more just because what happened at Anfield. I mean, that still hurts. Do you know what? That still hurts. Yeah. That Little was the only man. defeat as well. That was the only defeat in the season. If they didn't lose that, they would have been invincible. Yep. The only defeat they had, the way they was defeating on that game, still hurts the Newcastle fans. And you know what? Actually, this morning on Twitter, I saw some of the Liverpool fans mention about, you know, this game still, the game that Liverpool beat them after, you know, many extra plus minutes, whatever, after the 90 minute. I mean, it's going to mean a lot. So, yeah, we have, as you guys can see, everyone is watching this. Big up to everyone. Really appreciate the support. Can you see, like, in here, tough times ahead coming for Liverpool. Like everyone else. We went through, you know, Arsenal next five, six games in the Premier League and Chelsea, City, Man United. But I will out. say, no. I will say, I think if we have Jota back for that, if we have Diaz, obviously, I don't think he'll be back, but fingers crossed he is. Diaz, Jota, I mean, that's Salah, Nunes, Gakpo as well. I think we can, I think it'll be high scoring. I think I could see a high scoring game in that one. But then, yeah, I could see like a 2 2 or something. This game, yeah, I think, sure. good. Yeah, and also, Football Talk says, uh, when you use your next reaction, it Arsenal? will be it will be tomorrow for um, Arsenal Newcastle game. I'll uh, be doing that one as well, to be fair. I want to see that. But as a neutral, that makes me excited for the one. But to know that we lost is going to make it worse because, mm -hmm. especially if Newcastle drop points and then we would have went so much closer to them and then we bought the chance. It's just, 
Right, it's, it's going to be exciting game hopefully tomorrow. Like I could see a very good game tomorrow. Good game of uh, football. That's for sure. And of course, my man, you're more than welcome. New part of my channel now, that's for sure. And also, um, Football Talk is more than welcome to come along. Like I said, men, drop me a message on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook and uh, we're going to have a chat. And yes, you're more than welcome to come on. And uh, Liam says, come on, Arsenal. If Arsenal beats Newcastle, I mean, it just, it's just another step closer to the title, that's for sure. I mean, what's to Chelsea, especially see if drop points to Chelsea, which I don't think people see, but it's, Chelsea have a performance in them. And I could see a performance versus City, honestly. That, I could see one performance which stands out. And it, it's, it's at the bridge as well. So I'm not saying Chelsea will win, but I could see Chelsea making City drop points. I could yeah. do that. Like I've, we've mentioned that yesterday, we said, you know, um, Chelsea seems to always find a way to play against um, City, like Tottenham as well. Tottenham style of football always seems to just do well Sorry, against look, I don't think it will work this time because they start slow. And when you start slow versus one of the best teams in the world, or if not the best, and that's going to be costly. But if they can just... The Spurs are in a mess. I think the, the the big six are all in a mess except Man City, Arsenal. Actually, Man City decently, but they, they'll be fine. United are good. Arsenal are good. I think the other three are bad situations. Tottenham, Liverpool, Chelsea. They're all not in a great position. Yeah, definitely. And um, Liam says, how are people saying he's rude for Arsenal? I know. Be? People are saying that. <laughs> huh. Spurs, it's mostly Spurs fans, Liam. So they're just going to be silly about Tottenham, Arsenal. So. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like I mentioned, I still think, I don't know, I keep saying this. I will stop saying this, right? I will stop saying that I still think City is going to win because every time I say this, City seems to just drop silly points. Like I've mentioned, City last two games at home, they drop out of six, you know, they only go one point. Against I mean, you're expecting them to beat Brentford. I mean, you expect them to be Brentford, but they didn't, and then you expect them to be Everton, they didn't. So it just shows that the best league in the world can deliver shocks. So oh, it's yeah, just hundred percent. Like today, I think not everyone. I think some people expected Brentford to win, that like not maybe get a point. That's it. But they've they've shocked the world, and ah, uh, uh, it's just not great for us at the stands. So hopefully we can win versus Wolves to get that confidence back in the team. And hopefully beat Brighton on the weekend, which I don't, I don't know if we are because the former in, I don't just don't know in this team honestly now because our defense yeah. is so rubbish. It's just been bad. I don't know what's happened. Yeah, I mean, I I get. I mean, don't get me wrong. Look, you as a Liverpool fan, like you just basically said everything. You you don't really have too much hope when you, you know, Liverpool face teams like away to Brighton. Like you mentioned yesterday, you clearly said, you know, you know, you said that it's going to be a very tough game for Liverpool. You're not really that confident. You just had the feeling that you may win, but you knew how tough it was going to be. And yeah, look, we, we, we both said, everyone in the chat, everyone agreed yesterday. We actually had a few people in the live chat yesterday saying, you know, Brentford will definitely get something against Liverpool, especially that performance against Leicester and how Liverpool's been this season. And yeah, this season, if I was a Liverpool fan, I wouldn't have much hope. It's like, I'm a Barca fan. I don't really have much hope about Barca this season. I've said the beginning of the season, I thought with the signings that we made, even without not having money, we still made some quite good signings. And yeah. I thought we may win La Liga because Madrid in La Liga is a completely different team with different mentality that Madrid is in, a, in the Champions League. But then, yeah, as the season going along, once again, we got knocked out in a group uh, stage in, a, in the Champions League. We just dropped points of the week against a very poor Espanyol, but then it's a derby, right? It's like everything is not having a good season, an amazing season, or, you know, even close from the expectations. But when it comes to these kind of games, like I've just mentioned, Barca against Spengler, Liverpool, Everton, you know, it doesn't matter how poor they are, they're always going to turn up. It's going to be a fight game. They hate each other. Look, so it's something what makes it confident versus Everton is at Anfield. So if it was at Goodison, yeah. then I would be panicking about the game. But but then Anfield's been quiet this season, so it really makes a difference, difference. I don't know. But yeah, I'm just, <laughs> I never thought we'd be this bad. We're, we're losing to Brentford. 
Leeds, Nottingham Forest. I don't know. And we beat City somehow. I do not know how. I but. know. He's, he's funny how you actually look back this season, right? This was the 10th... I've mentioned this already. This was the 10th times in 17 Premier League games Liverpool has been 1-0 down. And... You beat City, right? And you go and lose against Nottingham Forest, who's been very, very poor. You go and lose yeah. against. I Leeds. think we beat Man City, and then we beat West Ham in that midweek. And I thought we were not Nottingham Forest, but of course Liverpool do Liverpool. And then we lost to Leeds. I'm only including Premier League. The Champions League was in the middle, and then we lost. I think we I forgot the other games, but we're so inconsistent this season. I just don't know. We we can't even string two games in a row wins. I even five wins in a row. I can't see us beating Newcastle away. The way we're performing. No, for sure. Me even as well. Like I said, you know, like Chelsea, Tottenham, Liverpool this season is just like, wow. You just don't even know what to say anymore. You just have to, you know, wait and watch them. Watch That's why I'm not gonna, like, I don't really give predict honest predictions because I do not know what Liverpool will turn up because... Liverpool, one Liverpool can turn up where they're so good and they're one in bad in the second half. Or we can see a bad Liverpool where they're bad the whole 90 minutes. It's I don't know what's happened, but I'm just not confident in this team anymore like how I used to be, where when, when we won the league, I thought we would, we would destroy teams at Southampton, uh, Leeds, we did. And now this season, we can't even destroy Leeds and knowing the first, but we beat City and West Ham. I just... Yeah. It's just... Ah, it's just surprising. Crazy. Definitely crazy, crazy. But by the way, look, we are most time to go. Big up to every single one that support this live stream as always. Really appreciate the support. On your way out, like I always ask, right? On your way out, if you could please smash the like. You know, if you haven't smashed the like already, if you could subscribe to the channel, if you haven't subscribed, really appreciate the support. Uh, anything anything you want to donate to the channel, you know, you're more than welcome. Really appreciate it. You don't have to. But remember, anything you donate to the channel all goes back to invest for a big, you know, better tools and, you know, to invest in the channel, to try and grow more and have, like, more people in their live um, streams as well. Every little helps. But remember, you don't have to. And I do not expect people to just... You know, donate to my channel. But remember, always said it takes three seconds to subscribe to someone's channel and it takes three seconds to like someone's video. But yeah, my man, once again, I know it wasn't the result the result you expect, but I really appreciate you coming along, my man. Really enjoy it again. I'll be, doing like. Arsenal. I'll be doing the Arsenal. So of I'm hoping course. Arsenal win, but it's not really hurt. I mean, it's not really doesn't matter because we lost our game. And that's not great because Newcastle. Let's say Newcastle drop points tomorrow. It won't be. It'll be good, but since we drop points, it won't be that mad because they're still going to be however many points in front of us. And United are going to beat Bournemouth. Let's be honest. Um, so United could go further ahead of us, and you got who else is in a Chelsea? Who got Man City? I think Man City will beat them, but you never know. Chelsea could go closer to us then. But yeah, man. Hopefully Newcastle drop points tomorrow. But yes. how uh, how yeah. can I assume a Newcastle are good? They couldn't even beat Arsenal tomorrow. They're that good. Yeah. Look, I've got a question for you before we go, right? If you know, who would you want to win the league, right? I don't I know you don't want Arsenal or City to win the league as a Liverpool fan. Right. But if you had to pick between City or Arsenal, who do you want to win the league? I mean I would rather Arsenal because I don't really have any Arsenal fans, friends here. So, honestly, Arsenal, but they'll be, it'll be bad for both. But if Man City win the league, it'd just be boring. Man City, the same old winner. Um, so, I don't really have much Man City or Arsenal fans or friends, so it won't matter. But it's just boring then seeing Man City win three in a row. And so, yeah, I would rather Arsenal, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't want either. I would rather want us, but we're not in a title race. Let's just say, say that. No, no, your title race, like, you know, for you to the challenge for the title is gone. The dreams was over about before the World Cup. I think I said this before the World Cup. I said that, you know, I cannot see Liverpool. The only way we win, the only way we win the title is if Arsenal have five injuries and Man City have Haaland out for three months, which honestly, 
I mean, Haaland's a beast, so he's not going to get injured. But, I mean, that's the only way. And that's considering we win our games, which, honestly, we have not looked great. Last, I think even versus, versus Southampton, we didn't look that great. I know we got the goals, but but Southampton, they could have beaten us as well. So, yeah. we need no, Darwin, we need Darwin we... Nunes to get firing. We really need Darwin Nunes to get firing now because now we're getting to the point where a win, is even a jammy win will take. We're getting to that point where Darwin Nunes gets the first chance he needs to bury it because we're in a top four race and we drop more points, we move behind and we get fifth and we get Europa League, which I do not want because that's just going to be the worst and only thing ever. Yeah. Thursday nights, which will be the most. Oh, my God, we're going to have to hear the Europa League music. But I still think we'll get top four if we send midfielder. If we don't, then forget top four because we're not getting that then. Do you know, I'm mentioning about Nunes, right? I, I keep saying this about Nunes. I said, you know, as much as, like, I keep banking Nunes, it's getting to the point where, you know, Nunes needs to start, you know, finish his chances because, you know, it's not only mentally affecting him, but also mentally affecting yeah. the team as well. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Liverpool, That's why we sign Gakpo as a clinical finisher. We need Gakpo. Yeah. And um, Thomas Rogers, big up to you, Thomas. Really appreciate the support. Liverpool need to come top yeah. four. Yes. Otherwise, definitely. we're not going to be attractive enough to sign Bellingham. And we're not going to be attractive to, enough to sign anyone that's starring because they're going to look at Liverpool, Man United, Newcastle, just so you have them three choices. You're already excluding Liverpool because you're, they're not even in the Champions League. And Declan Rice, just to be going for him, he's not coming to us. I think if Chelsea, Liverpool, Tottenham come in for him, I think I don't. I think he's choosing Liverpool over Tottenham and Chelsea because I think Tottenham and Chelsea are worse than us, but Tottenham are above us, which. Does not make sense, but we're better than Tottenham and Chelsea, I think. But we're not way ahead. We're all the same level. Yeah, I look, um, uh, Dalev. I, I agree with you. I think you're better than Chelsea and Tottenham. But yeah, like for you, we've mentioned this yesterday, right? For Liverpool to be able to attract, you know, this kind of talents, quality players like you've mentioned, Declan Rice, Bellingham and stuff, you need to finish top four because these players will always pick, you know, teams that are playing in the Champions League, right? These players are, you know, and they're basically, they're still young, like Bellingham, you know, young player. I'm sure he just wants to get better and better. And, you know, if City comes or Madrid comes, Liverpool's not in the Champions League. The hopes is not it's not many chances for Liverpool to sign. Because I by. think this defeat, in my opinion, was on the players. Who's who's the blame on the defeat for you for today? When today? Yeah. Uh everyone, because I will blame all the players for their attitudes, their reaction they have. It was very poor. You know? I yeah, blame I blame you. I think Klopp maybe for the car ox thing, that's it, probably because I would start Carvalho, but... Simba. Yeah, definitely. But um, remember that we've mentioned, Aleval, we mentioned about um, Alex, Alex Chamberlain. He's been really poor, right? I don't yeah. know why clubs keep playing um, Alex all the time. But then Alex today was one of the Liverpool, the best players, right? He's been he poor. scored the goal. He scored the goal to bring us back in it. And well, I didn't believe, but... Wait, yeah, I and I think he's today... I've, do you know what? I have to mention the attitude from a lot of the players. It's not the attitude that players should have when they play at this high level. Or Especially Van Dyke. I, I think the most concerning one is Van Dyke because I did not expect Van Dyke this season has been the worst, one of the worst in the backs in the Premier League. Let's be honest. Like, like if he, Konate and Matip, them two look better. Than Van Dyke in that defense, just like we look more stable. Like, like we didn't look stable, stable, but we look much more better without Van Dyke in that defense. Not saying Van Dyke should never start. Obviously, he should start. Obviously, as our leading centre back, but we look much better without him in that defense versus Brentford when it was two 0 Like, but obviously Van Dyke will start over because he is our best centre back. He's Van Dyke. Yeah. He will start yeah. because his name is Van Dijk. That's reality. But yeah, like I said, I I I would say the whole you know everyone that played today 
probably like apart from Alex, you know, for Alex, uh, Chamberlain was you mean Alison, um, like Alison's always saving us a lot, yeah, too. and with engine already as well. Alison always, you know, seems to always be in there, doesn't really make too many mistakes, and he was good again today. He saved a few times, but by the way, big up to 22 people watching us right now. Really appreciate the support. If you could smash the like on this video, if you're new to the channel, please make sure you subscribe. We almost, you know, uh, review the game. We are about to go in an, in the next two three minutes and um, if you have anything to say you know drop you come in the live chat and i'm gonna go through and remember if you want to donate anything to support the channel you're more than welcome you don't have to but i appreciate if you're new and subscribe to the channel and smash the like on this video remember it only takes three seconds to support the channel really appreciate but yeah my man uh, let me just finish off. Yeah, I think players' attitude is not the attitude that, you know, Liverpool fans expect. Liverpool fans do not want to see players performing the way they did, like you've mentioned Van Dijk, you know, Alex, Arnold as well. I think Trez has just been... Trez can defend, poor tactic, giving too much space away. You know, Elliot was just shocking. You know, he could not get a ball and create anything. Salah today was shocking poor as well. He could not find any gap. He could not create anything. Nunes is Nunes, right? Seems to always be there. I'm still going to give him time, but let's say a win, we need a win versus Chelsea. It says 1-1 one, one, last minute, and Nunes has a 1v1 chance and he misses that. That's when I'm maybe going to lose patience because... We're in a top four race. Let's be honest. Like we are in a top four race, and now we need to feel, get wins. We have to get some wins in the bounce. This is why this win was so important. We needed to win this because we would have been two. We would have won. We would have won above Tottenham, and we would have been only let's be three points behind Man United. And let's say Newcastle drop points tomorrow, we are only three points behind them. But we see we lost this game. Now I have to go from start one. We have to start from the beginning where we hope team drop points which I do not want to be in the situation but we are I guess in the situation um Dalival guess who we got in here we've got Piers Morgan's <laughs> fake account right saying hi he whatever he's saying uh, anyways <laughs> Piers Morgan big up to you by the way big up to you and, Ronaldo uh, you made Ronaldo leave to an yes. an an sorry but it's fine let me see what he says anyways okay I hate to say this, but it feels Liverpool are like missing a 37 years old number nine uh, type of player. I wonder, is there anyone I've. I mean, what can we say? You know, what can we say? Who Liverpool will get? They got Nunez, they got Gapo, they got Firmino, they got. I mean, he's just trying to be fine. We have the attack. I think we have the attack, we have the defence. It's just that little hole we need to fix because. The thing is, I blame the defence, but the midfield leads to that defence. The midfield, let's be, it's rubbish, and that leads to the defence, which is terrible as well. So I think we need a midfielder. I don't know who we're getting. Apparently, Klopp come out press before the game. He said, uh, if people look at how much we buy before, and he's not willing to spend the cash, which worries me now, if we're going to buy someone. Because cool. like, if we don't buy anyone and... and I I wouldn't be Klopp, obviously, because he deserves too much. He has too much credit in the bank to get sacked. But if he does a sign midfielder and we don't get top four, and maybe let's say how we 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 play so bad that the players lose and Klopp lose the dressing room, then maybe consider sacking him because he's off the dressing room. You can't do anything else. But I'll, he has too much credit in the bank to get sacked. That's, he has too much credit. I don't think he yeah. will. Though. I agree with you, my man. Also, Thomas Rogers says. Liverpool need to sign some more defenders with more quality. I no, do believe no. that Liverpool needs a right back for sure. But no, no, no. Thomas Rodgers. I just want to say, if we sign a midfielder, the defender will be much better. I do think we need a defender, but midfield is more important because if midfield is if it get a CDM in and maybe a one more midfielder, that leads to defense being much more better. So if we can get a midfielder in that can actually defend the back four, then I think the defender will be much better. But I, I agree. We do need a centre-back. We do need a defender if we get a midfielder in because I think Gomez is not good enough. Let's be honest. Gomez is not good. Get Guardiola in, in the summer. 
I mean, I think you're making a good point in there. Remember that midfield's always, if you have a solid midfield, a strong midfield, especially like a player like we've seen from Man United, Casemiro, how good he's been. Yeah. And no Varane, Martinez. You and Casemiro, they're, they're, yeah. they're not going to concede many chances. With yeah. us, Fabinho, he's been poor this season, so you kind of assume we're going to get some chances. We're going to I let think him. Fabinho yeah. has been poor since like halfway through last season. Yeah, I think Fabinho, this is the thing. I think Fabinho looked good versus Villa and looked good versus Southampton. But then yeah. here comes the reality. Uh, Piers yeah. Morgan, that's too far. We're not getting relegated. Look. Yeah, of course, it's Piers Morgan. Come on. P- P- Piers Morgan always claimed that, you know, Cristiano is the, the god of football, the greatest of all time. Not winning the World Cup. Some, and, somehow. Um, yeah. And also, but big up to Piers Morgan anyway. At least, like, yeah. you know, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please make sure you smash the like on this video. You know, I really appreciate you coming along, by the way. And um, Thomas Rogers says he, he agrees. Yeah, like I said, having a solid midfield will always help, you know, your defence, will always improve your defence, that's for sure. But I do believe if Liverpool has to go to go and get a defender, it has to be a right-back. You know, look... Um, Trez Arnold had his first assist of the season today, right? A player who, you know, he usually gets a free kick, taking corners, assist. He's very good on a ball, very good passing as well. But then he's so poor tactic. He's I just want to say, like, and he can't defend. Really, because Trent, Trent's been so good because of the, um, uh, if you if you give, if, well, the reason Trent's been so bad this season because he hasn't had support from Henderson or Elliot. Because that's why Trent's been so good for us. But since there's no support for Trent to not defend work, he's been bad. So I, I do blame Trent for defending, but he hasn't learned to defend. That's the thing. So I think there's there's been no stability for Trent to go all out attack because he has to defend. But I do think Trent needs to fix defending a bit. He does. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you, my man. And um, Piers Morgan says, if you suck club, anyone who comes yeah, in... I agree. And I don't ac- accept when Rooney is the manager of Liverpool. I agree. Now. Well, the Rooney Ro- Rooney Ro- 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 part is a downgrade still, but um, but yeah, I agree. I mean, if you sack Klopp, who's out there? Like Thomas Tuchel's not going to do the job he did. Um, uh, who else is out there? Um, you can go for Zidane potentially, be my good France job. But yeah, you're going to get a downgrade if you sack Klopp. He's not going anywhere though. Don't worry, guys. He's not going. The only way he goes if it goes really bad. If we get like if the, if we play so bad that we're conceding ten goals again, that's how bad we have to be. Definitely. I mean, let's say we know that Klopp's not going to leave Liverpool. I can't see you know they get rid of Klopp anytime soon. Even we know that this season is not going to be more than you know just fighting for top four, right? We know that uh, Premier League wise. But you as a Liverpool fan, right? There's not many top quality football managers out there, like, you know, with a good CV as well. You don't really need to have a good CV to be a top manager for me, like for me or yourself to class as a top manager. But if you, let's say, yeah, club leave Liverpool at the end of the season, right? I, mean, I could see him leaving Liverpool if the owners don't back him. Because yeah, who would you bring in? Ah, this is who hard. you like to have in? Probably Thomas Tuchel is the only option out there. I mean, you can go for Pochettino, but he's he can't win a trophy. Uh, Thomas Tuchel is probably the only one. I mean, you can law. Who can you? I mean, there's no one else out there. I mean, you could go for this thing. You can go two ways with this. You can go unexperienced and they grow into some next manager in the next seven years, like Klopp did, or you could go with right now, like Antonio Conte, who's a good man of see. He is a world class manager, but for Tottenham, he's been poor. Um, so yeah, it depends what route we're gonna go. I won't, I won't go for the now route because I can't wait seven years, six years, like Klopp did. So Thomas Tuchel for me. Thomas Tuchel is a realistic one, but we're not gonna sack. I, I can't see us sacking Klopp, but if we do, probably Thomas Tuchel. Yeah, for sure. Anyways, um, Piers Morgan says thumbs up to you, man. Nice video. Really appreciate that's for oh, sure. Goodness. Really appreciate the support, my man. And um, Stephen Gerrard. No, no, no. He, um, we're not going to discuss Stephen Gerrard. He cost us the title last season, but you mm-hmm. know, that's another discussion. Uh, I mean, Stephen Gerrard, 
I mean, that's the thing with Steven Gerrard, right? I've said this a few times. I'm not a fan, tactic, I'm not a fan of Steven Gerrard because, you know, I think he was very, very poor at times at Rangers. But yeah, remember what he did, the work he did at Rangers as well was brilliant. And that at Villa, he struggled big time. Tactic, he was very poor. But who knows, you know, Liverpool, you know, he's a legend of the club, right? And uh, Liverpool may bank him. He may be likely to get, uh, you know, results and apply his performance. And yeah, things could have gone well. Who knows? You know, football is, like I keep saying this, right? Football is a funny game that things change from the day to the night, right? And let me say this again, right? I've said this yesterday because um, Dalival was with me yesterday and we've mentioned. And we said, imagine, just imagine this, right? Imagine Arsenal winning the title, right? Winning the league in a year that Manchester City signed Haaland, right? right? How crazy that would be. Okay, Piers Morgan come up with the list of them. Here we go. Um, none of them are great except once to go. Henri, I want nah, to say. Southgate is just a bold job. He plays nah, for Southgate is very poor. Boss, Sha- Xavi, he's unproven. Ah, yeah, South- I think South- South- yeah, yeah, I think the Southgate one, he played too much defensive football and he cost teams trophies. So Thomas took out that list. I, I, and that depends because there's no great managers out there, really. I mean, you can go for Jose Mourinho, but I think he's, in terms of finished, not finished, but I think he can. He's not going to get a big job. I'll yeah, yeah Jamie- I agree. Big up to you, my man. Really appreciate the support. Says Klopp is good. Yeah, yeah. Klopp, I yeah. think Klopp, for me, I said this yesterday when we were talking about Graham Port, we were talking about Antonio Conte as well. I said that, for me, Klopp is above players, um, managers like Antonio Conte. I would put top managers, Klopp, Ancelotti, Mourinho, Pepe Guardiola, for sure. But let me just go back in here with Piers Morgan. I would say... Like Dalival said, Thomas Tuchel, but then everyone else from in here now. And he made a good point. I know he's my Barca, but Xavi, you know, Xavi needs to improve because Xavi hasn't improved. I think you'll take QC. I think this is me. Like Liverpool right now are in a bad position, but at least I think we need a manager. If we sack Klopp, if we do, we win. But if we do, we need a manager that's proven now because they can't wait, let's say, seven years, six years because. Chelsea have to wait potentially two years for Graham Potter to settle in, potentially. So I don't want to be Chelsea where they have a process. I want to get straight into the process, especially, but for Klopp to get sacked, it needs to be really bad. Like, I mean, Salah wants, it needs, Salah needs to go. If if it, if it gets bad and Salah needs to go, Van Dijk requests to go, we lose 10 nil, for example. That's the only way he gets sacked. That is literally the only scenario. Yeah. Piers Morgan says, my name. No, surely not. Like a Man United legend, no. basically, come from Everton. Surely, I mean, it doesn't mean you anything, even, right? I don't think he's this Liverpool. You know, he, it just doesn't make sense. We ain't ready to Liverpool know that he's a former United man. He can't. He's going to betray this club like that. He can't. <laughs> And he says Klopp is good. Yeah, yeah, like I said, Klopp is a top manager. But by the way, people, I said that I was going to leave this live stream about 20 minutes ago. But yeah, it's always good to. I always try as well. This is why my live stream seems to last longer because I always like to have time to hear everyone's for, you know. I want to read everyone's, you know. And I really appreciate the support, big time. But yeah, uh, my men, we're going to be back tomorrow. Straight away. Hopefully after Newcastle drop points. Hopefully Newcastle drop points. But it won't matter because Liverpool lost today, which makes it worse. Yeah. If we just won this game, I would have watched the game with the joy tomorrow. But I can't seem to watch yeah. any game with joy. Because That's Liverpool sure, my man. And um, look, anything you want to say before we go, my man? Um, so everyone that watched this, everyone uh, in the chat. Uh, Liverpool are a disgrace. The whole team is a disgrace. But... Hopefully we get top four and beat beat Brighton away, which I can't be confident about. I can never be confident anymore with this team. Like even at um let's say Nottingham Forest at home, I can't ever be confident with that anymore because we've seen it Brighton West beating us at Anfield, so I can't be confident. And Leeds yeah. as well. Let's be honest, Leeds beat us as well. Yeah. But yeah. 
But I'll be joining tomorrow. Hopefully Newcastle. Hopefully it's a good game. I just want a good game for that. And United face. Really nice to see a good game. I think United face Bournemouth tomorrow, which honestly United should win that. Unless Bournemouth do madness, which I can't see happening. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. But yeah, big up to you. Really appreciate you coming along and everyone who's watching this. We've still got 12 people. But unfortunately, I have to go. Really appreciate On your way out, please smash the like on this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Really appreciate the support. And like I said, anything you want to donate to support the channel, you don't have to. But I really, really appreciate it. It means the world. And um, God bless you all. Good night to most of you. Because, you know, I live in the UK. I haven't asked you, Dalival, you, do you live in the UK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he lives in the UK as well. So we've both got the same times as well. It's almost nearly nine o'clock. Still yeah. time for dinner and stuff. And yeah, God bless you all and have a good night. I will see you tomorrow straight after the Arsenal in Newcastle. Thank you very much.